Okay, it's the same size box down here. Now shrinking the size of the filler, it's still 14% of that area is covered by blue dots. The thickness of the red layer is exactly the same, which is not always true in most nano fillers, as it turns out, when you construct that interface properly. But now you can see I have 40 to 50% of the interface is the stuff I never had up here. And so most of the volume is now not the filler and not the polymer as I measure it coming out of the bag. Okay, in fact, this underestimates the real effect because it can be 60 or 70 percent. So anybody who's taken a simple engineering course knows most of the time you would model such a thing by rule of mixtures. And you would average the property of the filler, property of the polymer. The problem is you forgot the 60 percent that's the interface that has the properties of neither one of those things you put in. So if you don't understand the interface, then you never get, maybe, you either get surprises or you never understand that the properties are now dominated by that red interface. And that's what we want to understand and, of course, utilize for you know, devices and properties. Um, so this is maybe one of the, our favorite examples. We did this one ourselves. Um, polymethylmethacrylate, a lot of you probably use, is the classical brittle polymer. Very brittle break, you know, uh, a couple of percent elongation uh, when you fall on a dog bone, and, of course, it just goes no yield and you get a nice brittle break. This is an example of where, if you design the interface properly, you put 2% of the filler, and you get 30 to, we've got as high as 45% elongation of the So it's still optically clear, 2%, it's almost like putting magic fairy dust into a polymer and getting a, a completely different set of properties. So now instead of a classical brittle break, you have an extremely ductile material with 2% filler. Okay, for those people interested in optical properties plus whole new sets of properties, this was actually quite valuable to them. I don't know of any other way to do that. In fact, I'm not sure that there's another curve in the world where you can get PMMA to go to 45% elongation with full necking ability like that. So obviously this, this dissipates a lot more energy than if you just have a break and it's actually valuable to a few people. Um, so let's see, so it doesn't work all the time because now we're back to this concept of, well, let's just put some polystyrene on there or something greasy and it will mix, right? Well, this is an example of polystyrene drafted on silica, put in a commercial polystyrene, and you can see big areas here of agglomeration. And yet, if we just change the molecular weight and nothing else at that interface and go to 160,000, then it disperses nicely. So we've been trying to understand this for a long time, and we did an experiment to really show what happens. If I take the nanoparticles and spin a film down, and then I put some free polystyrene on top, I'm going to change the molecular weight of that free polystyrene as I go from here to here to here. And so this is now just polystyrene interacting with polystyrene which you know, logically everybody said, well, that would just mix fine, right? Well, in this case, this gray background, forget about the white dots, the gray background shows it just wets the surface and interacts very nicely. At intermediate molecular weights, you can see it's actually pulling away from the surface. And at high molecular weight, I can probably tell you that's a picture of water on Teflon, you'd believe me. Except it's polystyrene, high molecular weight, sitting on high molecular weight polystyrene. And it's a really non-interacting surface. I mean, it's just not wetting, and it's trying to run off the top of it. So this is this, the really subtle effects with monster uh, changes in the properties and how you might then use these in the design. It's kind of one of our favorite examples too. Um, and, and if we do, uh, if we, now we're going to make full dog bones and do some other properties. So polystyrene, everybody knows melts a little over 100. And then eventually by the time you get to the kind of 150, 60, it's just going to flow because it's a non-crystalline material. We can put 2% of the filler in there and we can have still, a, of course, what you're looking at is a storage modulus. At 200 degrees C, you still have a rubbery material. There's still, you know, complete rubbery material uh, storage modulus there, and so it doesn't flow at all. If you want extended temperature properties for anything that is going to be at temperatures over 100 degrees C, you don't want it to flow away. Uh, Underhood applications is one concept here. And so we can really, again, with a small amount of filler and proper interface, you can have a drastic effect on, on properties. Um, We've gotten a little farther down the road, so another recent result is that not only can you get it dispersed, but if we go from kind of this quadrant right here to that quadrant right there, we can actually tune that interface to get either agglomerates, agglomerates highly dispersed, or in the case of something like this and this, these uh, it's a two-dimensional cut, but these are sheets and strings. So now we're putting nanoparticles in polymer, and they will self-assemble into very long strings of sheets which changes the rheology uh, immensely, as well as some properties. This is some pretty recent work, and we're still playing with understanding why that happens and, and what we can do with it. The 
the one message is it's really important to understand the interface if you're going to design new properties. And this goes to bi biological uh, applications, mechanical applications, even some optical. Um, we use a particular form of polymerization, which we really like. We're getting into some functionalization, which gets us into the biowork. And then, you know, the main message here, it's all about the interface. If you don't understand that, you can't design properties very well. But if you do, and you can tailor it, you can get into an awful lot of different fields as we are.